Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. I'm back at our Oak Mount project for another walkthrough video to show you the progress that we've made over the last couple months here. The last time I was here, we had completed uh, most of the underpinning. That has now been complete. The entire basement floor has been put back in and we're now starting to frame the building. So we've started the first floor addition and the framing there and I can't wait to show you the progress that we've made. I also wanna explain some of the challenges that we've had on the site here and things that have gone really well over the last couple months. Before we get into it, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. Before we do our walk around, I wanted to give you a quick update with what's happening with our permits and the city process for making this a legal eight unit building. We have now cleared our rental housing demolition permit. So that is ready to go, which basically says that anytime in the city of Toronto that you wanna remove rental housing, you have to go through the permit process. And what that looks like is very different depending on the amount of units that you have in the property. This one, was listed as seven illegal units at some point in the process. I'm not sure when that was done or how it was divided up, but we basically bought this property with four or five units in it and we're converting to eight legal units. Well, if you're doing that, you have to go through a rental housing demolition or conversion permit through the city of Toronto. So depending on how many units you're converting and how many units you're adding or subtracting, you have to go through that process. This is a bit of a pain in the butt and really a bit of a money grab from the city of Toronto. When you think about the fact that these were illegal units and we're adding legal units. We still have to go through this process, but it is what it is. There's no point in trying to fight it. You just kind of figure out how you work through it and keep moving ahead. So our application is in for our eight unit apartment conversion, and we're basically waiting for the committee of adjustments hearing, which should happen sometime in July. We're expecting that the full support of the planning department on our application. So really we don't foresee, uh, knock on wood, any issue getting past our committee approval. Once we get past the appeal period, we will then have the opportunity to apply for building permits for the eight unit dwelling that we have here. And then we will be able to complete the project. Right now we're working under a single family dwelling permit, which is why we're allowed to do our underpinning, our addition and our first floor framing. And then we're gonna have to stop and wait for our approval for the eight units before we can move any further. So I wanted to show you that and what's been happening there and the progress that's been made here over the last couple months. So the last time I was here, um, we had removed the back wall, but you can see we've gone even that much further now where this was where the old pocket door was, that's all been removed. And as you can see, we're now starting to frame the first floor addition. So this is the dividing wall that's gonna be going down the middle of the house. And on the right hand side, you'll see this is where one apartment will be. This will be bedroom here, and then bathroom, and then another bedroom, and then in the back will be the open living, dining, kitchen space. And the same layout is gonna be happening on this side. So we'll have a bedroom here, and then the bathroom. As you can see, the basement door has been removed and then another bedroom, and then the living room, dining room, kitchen space. So it's really starting to come together and you're really starting to see how these units are going to be laid out. As you may have noticed right away, the staircase is gone. So this is the staircase that was leading all the way up to the third floor. We've removed that because there is a ton of weight on the stairs. Um, in order to be able to frame out the, the first floor, we had to remove those stairs. In order to be able to frame the second floor, we're also gonna have to remove that bump out and uh, so that we can frame all the way across that opening as well. So the stairs have come out, so we really only have access to the first floor now and to the basement, but that's fine. As you'll see, we're, we're moving forward with the framing of the main floor. So we've been able to run this two by six structural wall right down the middle and that's picking up the load of the existing floor joists. And then these temporary support beams are in place so that we were able to remove all those other interior walls and start demolishing um, the floor below and starting to add the new floor joists. So you'll see the new floor joists on this side and the old floor joists, which will be removed and replaced with new ones on the other side. As we walk to the back of the property, you'll see that these are steel structural walls and there's a reason why we had to do structural steel walls here. Same as our Dover Court project. Um, because these are a certain distance to the property line, they have to be made from non-combustible material. So that's steel and a 5 8 dense glass on the outside. The siding has to be non-combustible and most of the material such as uh, wiring and things like that has to be non-combustible in this wall as well. So we've got that on one side and we've got the steel on the other. We ran out of material 
uh, last week. And so that's why this steel wall is only half done. And this has been a huge challenge on the job sites right now, uh, keeping up with the demand for material and getting it on site on time. So you'll see here the nine and a half inch TGIs. These are the floor joists. And the reason why we're able to use nine and a half TGIs is because we are basically got this support wall right down the middle and the joists only need to span half the house. So they don't need to be as big as our Dovercourt project, which is a clear span. So out the back, you'll see that the walkout is now done and the stairs are in. So those stairs will service both of the basement units and you can see all the lumber that's here and we've decided to save some of this lumber. We're gonna to try to repurpose some of it, make some shelving out of it maybe, or just clean it up and potentially sell some of it as well. And the rest of our site is basically being used as material storage uh, so that we can get materials on site so that we don't have to be held up when we're wanting to build. So the plan for the main floor is to finish up the framing here on the floor. So we'll take out the old floor joists, replace them with the new ones, and then we'll finish the first floor addition, we'll finish the back walls, and then we can start building on top from there. I wanted to point out one thing because I'm sure somebody will comment on it in the comments section below, but the question is probably gonna come up as to why there is wood in a non-combustible wall. And this is something that is specced by the engineer. So we need this double bottom plate uh, in order for the structural steel wall to be able to sit on that. And that's going to, I'm guessing, disperse the load. And then what is supposed to be here is a double top wood plate. Um, the framers made a bit of an error, so they added an extra plate, uh, got that approved by the engineer. And then the steel plate that goes over top of that uh, now services as our new area for the second floor, floor joist to sit on top of. But what that allows them to do is continue to nail everything together with that steel plate, their nailer will go right through and hit in the wood below. So instead of everything having to be screwed together, we can still use nails uh, to complete this. I wanted to also point out something about these steel studs, and that's that in normal times, steel studs or structural steel studs are about three times the cost of a wood stud. But in today's pandemic world that we're living in right now, wood is so crazy expensive. So our wood material is exactly the same cost as our steel material. So when we saw these come in from the architect, uh, these steel walls, we weren't terribly excited, but it's really the same cost to be able to build with steel at this point as it is with wood, which tells you a lot about the wood costs on this project. In our budget, we had about uh, $30,000 of material for this site. Our costs on our material are gonna be about three times that. So they're probably gonna be around 80 or $90,000 for wood. But this is why we build in contingency in all of our projects. And if you're building during the pandemic, I would say add about 20% for time and materials because everything right now is costing more and it's taking longer to get things on site and keep your projects moving forward. So we're down in the basement now. And as you can see, a lot has happened. The underpinning has been completed here. And if you haven't seen uh, the underpinning video that I did, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. But the underpinning is all complete. Now you'll see our interior waterproofing system is in place. And that means that the weeping tile, um, there's a perforated weeping tile, goes all the way around the perimeter. And then it dumps into this sump pit right here, which will then, once the water fills into the sump pit, it would get ejected. So that goes all the way around the perimeter, that weeping tile, and collects any water that comes in from the exterior. You can also see that framing has started down in the basement. So we've got this load-bearing wall right down the middle, which is now servicing the whole building. There's a strip footing that was put in underneath that. And now we can put the structural two by six wall in and everything can sit on that all the way up through the, the middle of the building. You'll also see that our radiant in-floor heating has been completed in the basement. So these are the radiant in-floor heating pipes for the one unit here, and those ones are for the other side. So the layout is exactly the same down here. We've got a front bedroom here, then a bathroom, then another bedroom, and then the kitchen and living room and dining rooms are in the back. And you may have noticed that we've got some things sticking up out of the floor. This is a backflow preventer for the basement plumbing in this unit. So all of these plumbing fixtures will flow through this backflow valve. So if there was ever a backup on the sewer, this would protect all of the, the basement uh, unit. So there's really no chance for a sewer backup um, on this unit because of that backflow valve. And there's one on this side, and there's also 
one on the other side, which is kind of buried there. So if you're doing new construction or if you're doing renovation, I highly recommend those backflow valves and they are code in some municipalities. The last time that I was here, the foundation walls had not been extended. So you can see now very clearly where this is the old section that is brick. The block foundation wall was the addition that was done uh, prior to us taking possession. And then you'll see the new poured concrete wall that was the addition that we did. So not a huge addition here, really only about 12 feet that we added to the foundation. And the reason the waterproofing stops there is that the waterproofing is done on the outside with the new addition. You'll see this six inch concrete curb. And what that does is it allows our back wall to sit on that curb and also gives us a bit of separation between the outside and the inside so that if water or snow builds up in that back section, it doesn't leak into the basement. So that's why that's there and the back wall will sit on that concrete curb. In terms of the rest of the house uh, off the back, it hasn't really changed all that much. As I mentioned earlier, we don't have access now to the second and third story without the use of ladders, which is fine. We'll build up the first floor and we'll probably put the temp stairs in so that we can access the second floor and third floor. And at this point, once we get our approval from the city for our eight units, we'll take the entire third story off and we'll complete uh, the framing for the building. But we have to wait until that's ready to do that. So we're continuing to move forward here at our project at Oakmount while we wait for our application for our eight unit building to be heard at the Committee of Adjustments. I hope you guys enjoyed the walk around and what's been happening here over the last couple of months. If you have, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. In the comments section below, I'd love to hear your questions. I'd also love to hear if you've got a renovation project underway right now. I'd love to hear how the budget's going, your timelines are going, and if you have to go through any sort of municipal application or any approval what that looks like in your municipality and with that i'll say thank you guys so much for watching i wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey and i look forward to hearing your success stories very soon